Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our special guest this week is Dr. Ginevra Lipton, recorded on-site at the 29th Annual AFRM Congress in Las Vegas. Dr. Lipton is the founder of the Frida Center for Fibromyalgia. We'll be back with her interview after this brief message from our sponsor. Hey there, listeners. It's your host of the weekly podcast, Redefining Medicine. I have a question for you. How much time do you spend ordering functional lab tests for your patients? Ordering from multiple lab companies for hundreds of patients can quickly turn into hours of admin time. But there's a new way to order lab tests that I'm excited to share with you. Rupa Health is a tool that lets you order 20 plus specialty labs in a single portal. You can order all tests you normally do from companies like Dutch, Vibrant, Genova, and Great Plains, and so many more. Imagine you're ordering a hormone panel for a patient that includes tests from three different labs, You have to log into three different websites to place separate orders and then come back weeks later to check tracking number and download results. Rupa eliminates all of that by having all ordering, tracking, and results in a single place and they also handle invoices, tracking shipments, automated follow-ups, personalized instructions for completing tests, and so much more. The best part about Rupa, it's free for all practitioners. Go to rupahealth.com that's R-U-P-A health.com to join a live demo or sign up to see how it works. Now let's get back to today's show. We are so happy to welcome Dr. Ginevra Lipton to the podcast today. Not only is she the founder of the Frida Center for Fibromyalgia, but she is also board certified in internal medicine and trained in functional medicine, a holistic approach that blends both Western and alternative medicine. Welcome today, it's so nice to talk with you. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. So it's really interesting. You used yourself as a guinea pig for your research on fibromyalgia. Can you expand on that? Well, it sort of was born of necessity because when I developed fibromyalgia in medical school, uh, I went to see multiple specialists and they didn't really have much to offer me. And I actually had to take a year leave of absence from from medical school and I realized I was gonna have to figure it out myself. So I just experimented and tried lots of different things. And fortunately, I was able to find a few treatments that really helped me enough that I was able to get back to medical school. And then I was like, okay, I have to devote the rest of my career to really figuring this illness out so I can help other people. So the initial kind of intense part was that first year. And then since then, 20 years plus later, I've been kind of fine-tuning my approach. So for the people who aren't familiar, would you mind describing what exactly fibromyalgia is? Sure. Well, it's a condition of widespread muscle pain, fatigue, and brain fog. And it's been really pretty hard to figure out. So uh, for many years, it was thought to be psychosomatic or all in people's heads. But we're uh, finding a lot of really good data these days, and we're really figuring out what's going on in the body to cause those symptoms of muscle pain, fatigue, and brain fog. What steps did you take to create the Frida Center for Fibromyalgia? Well, first I worked after residency, so I did an internal medicine residency, and then I realized I wanted to get more experience kind of in pain management in general. So after graduation, I worked in a comprehensive multidisciplinary pain clinic. I did that for a few years, and then I realized I really wanted to just focus back down on fibromyalgia. And there wasn't any uh, clinic or institution or hospital that was really doing that. Mm -hmm. So I realized, again, I was going to kind of have to do it myself. So uh, a few years after graduation, I started the first iteration of the Frida Center for Fibromyalgia. That was about 10 years ago. And since then, I've been kind of fine tuning that, um, trying to kind of make it an institution where we do both patient care, research and education. And just a side note, I named it for Frida Kahlo, who the famous Mexican artist who did all those self-portraits. She was actually believed to have had fibromyalgia. She certainly suffered from chronic pain, 
And she has one painting that shows her with nails all over her body, and they're actually in the specific tender points that are associated with fibromyalgia. So I named my clinic for her. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay. Um, so did you mention that in any of your talks that you've given at the 29th annual A4M conference yet? Or I know you have plenty. And also, would you mind giving us a few key takeaways from those talks? Because I know you have plenty of interesting topics that you're speaking sure. about. Sure. You know, I have not actually mentioned the Frida Kahlo connection in any of my talks, but I have one more left to give this afternoon, and I think I will. Because it's yeah, such, I think it really resonates for people and they can really understand that this is something that has been affecting people for a long time. Just because we have a name for it now doesn't mean it hasn't kind of been affecting people for probably hundreds of years. Let's see, my other talks, two talks on fibromyalgia and how to reduce pain. And I uh, particularly focus on the use of low-dose naltrexone, mm -hmm. which we had a whole pre-conference workshop dedicated to and uh, also the use of cannabinoids for fibromyalgia pain reduction. So both of those are really kind of interesting alternative complementary approaches that can be used together to treat fibromyalgia pain. And the beautiful part is they are not opioids, so they're not addictive, they're not things that um, can cause some of the negative uh, ramifications of chronic pain treatment. Um, and then I also did a talk on cannabinoids for uh, psychiatric conditions particularly focusing on PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's another condition that's kind of hard to treat, commonly associated with fibromyalgia actually, so near and dear to my heart. And uh, cannabinoids can be very helpful to reduce the, the symptoms of nightmares, flashbacks, uh, sleep disruption, and anxiety that come along with PTSD. So how do they help? I mean, uh, for our listeners, if, if someone is struggling with this, what, how, how would this help them? So low-dose naltrexone helps to reduce the neuroinflammation, the brain inflammation that we see in fibromyalgia. And we think that that's one of the primary drivers of the pain that people experience. And cannabinoids, particularly CBD, can actually do the same thing. It also reduces neuroinflammation. So if you take two things that reduce neuroinflammation, you can get really good additive effects. So I think that those two things really together can give people a lot of pain relief in a, in a very safe way. So if someone was first starting to feel these effects, what would be your first recommendation to them? If somebody was thinking they had fibromyalgia or they were kind of starting down that journey, you yes. mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. So these days, luckily, many more doctors are familiar with fibromyalgia. So I think first starting with getting the confirmed diagnosis and the diagnosis is given at this point really just still based on symptoms because as of, as of right now, we don't have a diagnostic laboratory test or imaging test that can say definitively yes or no. It is still be based on symptoms. There are some things probably in the next few years, there are gonna be some uh, confirmatory objective abnormalities that people can use to diagnose it. But for right now, starting and getting the right diagnosis, making sure there's nothing else going on that can cause those symptoms. There's a lot of other things that can cause widespread pain and fatigue. Chronic fatigue syndrome, hypothyroidism. So you wanna make sure that you've got the right diagnosis first, mm -hmm. and then start working on things that you can do to reduce inflammation in your body. And for me, one of the things that I first found 20 plus years ago when I was diagnosed in medical school was that there were certain foods that generated inflammation for me. Mm -hmm. So working on finding and eliminating food sensitivities is a really good place to start. Then talking with your doctor about maybe starting something like low-dose naltrexone. That's, a, that's where I would have people kind of start. And it's really important that they kind of both work with their doctor, but also look outside. Their doctor might not be familiar with some of the newer data. Mm -hmm. So I did, for this very reason, write a book called The Fibro Manual which has a huge component that's designated towards what patients can do for themselves. And then about a 10 page part at the end that's really focused on what uh, doctors can do and has a lot of references so doctors can really understand what's going on so they can help their patients better. Wow, what an awesome resource. So besides all the research you've done and your book and everything that you continue to do, um, is there something that you're looking to be well known for, like one thing in particular? Well, it's kind of a big, a big goal, but I would like to be known as the doctor that figured out fibromyalgia. And you know, 
I'm happy to share that with other people, but, but I, would love, I would love that because it's so near and dear to my heart because I personally have experienced it. I have family members that experience it. I have a 14-year-old daughter that I'm worried might develop it. There is some genetic predisposition. So mm -hmm. for personal and professional and wanting to help everybody that deals with this really frustrating and scary illness, mm -hmm. I'd, love to, I'd love to be the one that figured it out so I could help them. Wow. Well, it sounds like you're on your way <laughs> and you have many things going. So thank you so much for sharing that with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.